Hey everyone, it's me, with Therum, and I have a very special video for you today. I present the complete guide to shielding in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, before we get into this video, uh, if, if you find the content in this video to be helpful, or if you like the other kind of content I'm putting up on my channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, like the video for the algorithm, it really does help me out. Now, this video will attempt to explain all the ins and outs of shielding in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's meant to cover advanced topics, as well as the most basic of options. I want this guide to be as helpful for as many players as possible, regardless of their skill level. A lot of the footage used in this video is captured on a modded switch that allows me to use the training mod pack. And if you want to use the training mod pack yourself, links will be in the description to help you get started to see if your switch is even moddable. But big disclaimer here, I am not responsible for any damage you may cause to your switch or if you get banned by Nintendo, so please proceed at your own risk. For consistency, I'll be using a GameCube controller to reference inputs, and I'll also have an input display available on most of the footage as well. If you're using a Pro Controller, you're going to need to switch L and R to ZL and ZR respectively, and if you use a single Joy-Con, stop it. Get some help. And a better controller. Please. This is the table of contents. As you can see, we'll be covering a ton of concepts in this video. Timestamps for each of these sections will be available in the description if you want to skip ahead to a particular topic. The first topic we're going to discuss here today is basic shield info slash frame data. Every character has one frame of startup on their shield. Some characters will have invincibility, others will not. But the actual shield starts on frame 2. Every character has 11 frames of shield drop lag. This will be important in several sections, so just keep this in the back of your mind. The shield is not complete until frame 3, because frame 4 is the earliest you can drop your shield. This will also be important later, so just keep that in mind. Your shield will shrink the longer it's active, and it can only protect you from a certain amount of damage. If your shield does break, your opponent should be able to get a major punish on you, and you want to avoid this at all costs. But if your shield does break, what you want to do is mash. The next section we'll be discussing is out of shield options. And you can only perform certain moves out of shield. Rolling, which can be performed by pressing shield and then left or right. Spot dodging, which can be performed by holding shield and pressing down. Grabbing, which can be performed by pressing A in shield or by pressing Z in shield. You can perform up smash out of the shield by pressing up and A at the same time or by using the C stick if it's set to smash stick. You can also perform up B out of shield by pressing up and B at the same time as the name suggests. This can also be reversed but we'll talk about that more in the next section. You can also jump out of shield, full hops and short hops. To short hop you just have to let go of the jump button before the three frame jump squad is over. And alternatively, you can also press two jump buttons at the same time. Jumping opens up a variety of options for you. You can jump and then do an aerial or even buffer an aerial directly by holding jump and the aerial input at the same time. You can also perform your specials in the air after jumping, up B, side B, down B. If you're holding an item, you can also jump and press Z to drop an item directly below you. You can also throw items in cardinal directions while in shield, and an easy way to do this is to just use the C-Stick up, down, left, right. Don't be afraid to mix and match some of these options to create some more interesting punish options out of shield. You can perform your out of shield options in the 11 frames of shield drop lag that I mentioned earlier. This is incredibly important and I will argue optimal throughout this video. Visit ultimateframedata.com stats Link to that will be in the description for more information on your character's frame data and out of shield options. But to recap, the options you cannot do directly out of shield are all of your tilt attacks, your forward smashes, your down smashes, and your grounded side and down special moves. Let's analyze this clip and see how I died. That's right. Terry performed a reverse up smash out of shield, which normally isn't possible for basically every character. Well, as it would turn out, auto turnaround mechanics work when you drop your shield and then perform your out of shield option in the shield drop lag. Terry can also do his spot dodging attack after spot dodging out of shield. 
The next topic we're going to discuss is B reversals out of shield. You can reverse your up B out of shield to have your hitbox start on the other side of you. You can do this by pressing B and tilting your left stick up and slightly to the opposite side of your character at the same time. And if that sounds a little confusing, just watch the input display in the next clip and feel free to rewind if you have to. Now for the more experienced players, have you ever tried to do an up B reversal out of shield but you ended up rolling instead? Well, that's because the angles for up reversals are actually different and change depending on whether you drop your shield or not. I don't have the exact analog values for you, but it looks like this picture. The blue lines indicate how far you can go while holding your shield and then doing up reversal, and the red lines indicate how far you can go after you've dropped your shield. And it is more lenient to drop your shield and then hit your up reversal than it is to continue to hold your shield and then go for your up -E reversal. And this is another reason why dropping shield to perform your out of shield options is simply better. The next topic we're going to discuss is grabbing out of shield. Now grabs in Smash Ultimate vary. The fastest one is frame six and the slowest one is frame 15. If you are not in shield stun, then your grab will come out at your normal speed, which is somewhere between frame six to frame 15. However, if you are in shield stun, there will be an additional 4 frames of lag that will make even the fastest grabs frame 10 and your slowest grabs frame 19, which is an incredibly long time. I'd also like to note that if you are in shield stun, throwing an item also gains the same 4 frames of additional delay. Also, it's worth mentioning that you cannot directly grab an item out of shield. You will just perform your grab animation. The next topic we're going to talk about is shield stun canceling, but first we're going to properly identify what shield stun is. When your shield is hit, it gets this staticky glow on it. That is shield stun. And normally, you can act out of shield only after the static disappears. However, there is an exception to this. After 11 hits on your shield, typically done by a rapid jab, you can buffer a frame 1 invincible roll or spot dodge. And like I said, this is mainly used as a tool to escape rapid jabs or punish your opponent doing a rapid jab. Normally, rolls gain invincibility at around frame 4 or 5, and lose invincibility around frames 15 to 19. The next topic we're going to be discussing is shield cancelling, and this is a pretty simple topic. Quite simply, some characters can cancel moves and animations by using the shield. And this is an incredibly useful mix-up option, as well as just a way to bail out on that option uh, to avoid getting punished. Dropping the shield will still take 11 frames, and you'll still have access to all of your shield options once you press the shield. Next up is roll cancel boost grabbing. What you're seeing right now is just a dash grab. And this next example is a roll cancel boost grab. Now, in order to perform these, all you need to do is, while in initial dash, press shield and then press A, and you'll perform the roll cancel boost grab. As you've seen, it'll let you extend your grab range further than a traditional dash grab, and this technique is not too strict, it's not too hard to learn, pretty easy to pick up. Benefits faster characters the most, but all characters can take advantage of this technique. We're finally moving on to what is safe on shield and understanding frame data. 
This is a really good and difficult question to answer, but let's start with frame data. For example, if something is minus three on shield, then that means your opponent can act three frames before you. And if it's something is plus three, then that means you can act three frames before them. The numbers you see on ultimateframedata.com are well-spaced and unstale values. And this is actually really important because what this means is that the numbers, the actual values will change over the course of the match. Essentially, it comes down to a function of a few variables. Spacing, staleness, hitboxes, speed of the move, the amount of shield stun inflicted, and your opponent's options. A well-spaced move can make something safe on shield. If your move is stale, it will be less safe. Different hitboxes of a move have different strengths. Some hitboxes are safer than others. And a move that causes a lot of shield stun can also help make it safe, depending on what options your opponent picks. Your opponent may not have an option to punish you effectively depending on how you pressure them or depending on if they pick a panic option that isn't optimal. Once you hit your opponent, that's when you gain frame advantage. This is when you perform combos, set up edge guards, ledge traps. It's the part where you play the game and your opponent doesn't really get to play. The speed of the move is important. The more end lag you have, the more likely it is you will be punished for using it on shield. Additionally, whatever your opponent's out of shield options are will also help determine what moves you should or shouldn't go for on shield. Game & Watch Up B is frame 3, so your moves need to be very safe and spaced. Whereas Cloud, his Up B is frame 7 slash 10, and his Up Smash is frame 12. You have a lot more leeway here. Finally, don't take this website's values as gospel. It is possible to get different frame values that make things safer than they otherwise would be. Next up, shield angling. While shielding, you can angle your left stick to position your shield. This is useful to prevent shield poking. And shield poking is the act of getting hit in an area of your character that is not protected by your shield. An easier way to angle your shield is to hold special, typically just the B button, after activating your shield. It's best to let go of the left stick, special, and shield, and then perform your out of shield option. Next up is probably the most obscure topic of all of the topics on this list, which is shield shuffling or shield DI. Now this was really prominent in Melee. However, in Ultimate, if you go to Vault, Tips, Techniques, and then scroll down to Shield Stun Shuffling, you'll see that it plainly states Tilting the stick in a direction while blocking an attack with your shield will cause you to move a very short distance in that direction. They really weren't kidding when they said you travel a very short distance. But with that said, it's not immediately clear to me that this technique is useless. It's already true that shield angling is useful. So maybe in the future, we might want to protect ourselves up and to the back a little bit. So maybe we drift slightly. And then maybe that microspacing actually helps you not get hit by something else. I don't know. There's a lot more testing on this uh, that remains to be seen. I'm not entirely sure that I even did this technique properly. All I know is there was a measurable difference and it's a technique that involves the shield and therefore it belongs in the complete guide to shielding in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm very curious to see what all of you do with this, if anything at all. Next up, parrying. Ooh. Ah, come on, dude. Look at these parries. Parrying gives you a frame one noise and visual indicator that you have completed or hit the parry or that your opponent has parried you. If you'll recall, the shield becomes a complete shield in three frames. So the first frame that you can drop your shield is frame four. And the shield drop animation lasts for 11 frames. And this is really important because in the first five frames of that 11 frame shield drop animation, you will perform a parry if something hits your parry box. You will be vulnerable for the following six frames 
of shield drop animation. The distance at which you can parry an attack is slightly larger than when your shield at full health. And this is still true even if your shield is damaged or shrunk or not at full capacity. Oh, that's perfect for my video, Gundam. Thank you so much for that. So you parried the hitbox. What now? Well, a few things. One, your shield won't take any damage and neither will your character. Two, it freezes you for 8 frames. 3. If your opponent attacked you directly, it freezes them for 11 frames plus the regular hit stun that they would go into. But please note, if you parry a projectile that they threw, they will not be frozen at all. 4. This means that you have 3 extra frames to execute a move to punish your opponent. 5. You can execute anything out of a parry. Running, tilts, your traditional out of shield options, grounded, special moves, whatever you want, go crazy. And finally, you'll look cool. You can parry a projectile at the same range as a normal attack, slightly larger than your shield at full health. Parrying that projectile will not damage your shield, which is huge in situations where the projectile otherwise would break your shield. Be smart about your parries on projectiles. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Your opponent will not be in stun if you parry a projectile, but you will be. And this means it is possible for them to hit you after the stun is over. After parrying, depending on the spacing of your opponent, it will be possible to jump out of parry and then jump again to footstool your opponent. This will give you 21 frames to punish your opponent which is a big increase over standard punish windows. Going into comboing is a bit outside the scope of this video, but I do believe that this is a technique of the future and I would highly recommend you checking out Gimmer's video about parry footstool combos. Here's an example of a parry footstool combo with Captain Falcon. Parry shifting is a technique that in theory would let you parry multiple timings of your opponent's moves including some timings you wouldn't normally be able to parry. What you would need to do is anger your shield down and parry with the furthest edge of your parry box. However, there are some problems with this technique, most notably the fact that most of the cast can't actually utilize it. Gimmer even says in his video that this technique only seems to benefit characters with medium height with good shield tilt animations like Wario. Additionally, you expose yourself to shield pokes if you miss. And finally, your opponent could just pick a different option to punish you, like Empty Land Grab, commonly known as the Tomahawk Grab, or just go somewhere else to continue neutral or establish stage control. In other words, this technique is a read. Instead of parry shifting, I would recommend just angling your shield towards the opponent. You can still parry your opponent off a read without exposing yourself to a shield poke, and additionally, all of the casts can angle their shield towards the opponent. we finally reached multi-hit moves and parrying. In general, if you're going to try and parry a multi-hit move, you should try and parry the last hit. Otherwise, you risk getting hit by the next hitbox of the multi-hit move. Additionally, some multi-hit moves cannot be parried mid-move like Fox's down air. There's simply too much shield stun. And this will require some experimentation and experience on your part to find out when you need to release your shield and what punish is optimal, if you can even punish it at all. As shown in this next clip, it was easier for me to parry the cross-up last hit of Fox's down air, and because I was able to parry it, I was able to punish it. Let's take a look. There are also some moves where it is possible to multi-parry, and please note that this is different from auto-parry. Essentially, you just tap shield again after parry to keep parrying. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the final section, auto-parrying. If multiple hitboxes hit within 1-2 to two frames of parrying, the game will auto-parry them without you having to press anything. Most importantly, 
You can parry a total of five times on a single shield drop. The first is the manual parry that you input yourself, and four auto parries. After the fifth parried hit, the auto parry frames become intangibility, and the first actionable frame is on the same exact frame as the fifth parry. And the earlier you parry a move, the better, because that can increase your auto parry frames up to four extra frames. However, even in a lab environment, this technique is incredibly inconsistent. It's not reliable to hit frame one parries, even by top players. Additionally, in my testing, spacing seemed to matter quite a bit when trying to auto parry Sheik's needles. In practice, if you land an auto parry, I would highly recommend you immediately shield again to protect you against any sort of follow up move or missed attacks that might otherwise be auto parried. This will save you against projectiles like Sephiroth's side B. I would highly recommend checking out other guides on how to parry. In the description, I will link Izaw's How to Parry video. And additionally, I have also included resources in the description discussing auto parry mechanics that goes into a little more detail and other little quirks and stuff that I did not present in this video. So definitely check them out if you want to know more. I have a little bit more information for you that didn't quite fit well in any other part of the video, and it relates to Steve. When Steve drops his shield normally, it is 11 frames of shield drop lag. But it's actually only 7 frames if he summons his crafting table, and the first 5 of those 7 frames is the parry window. With all of that said, this is the complete guide to shielding in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. At the very least, this is everything that I know about the shield in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. There's plenty of room for you to experiment and grow as a player with all of this understanding. It's quite possible that there will be more discovered in the future. Once again, if this video helped you, if you like the other kind of content I'm putting up on my channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell here on YouTube, and follow me over on Twitch. Stay safe, stay elite, and I hope to see you all in the next video or live on Twitch.